What is happening, guys? This is Logan from here, the Spear, presented to you by Noel Game Day. Uh, this is going to be one, probably our quickest instant reaction we've done in quite a while, probably since maybe early last year. But uh, we're going to do an instant reaction now to Florida State's uh, road game loss to the defending national champions, number two ranked team in the country. Uh, they lost 45-14. to 14. Um, This game was kind of over a little bit, what, first quarter? It was over uh, during the national anthem. <laughs> like you heard on ESPN. Yeah, um, as ESPN I'm with, said. Yeah, exactly. I'm joined by our co-host, Dustin Lewis. He is our lead writer for nullgameday.com. Uh, we're going to try to do these more often, just jump on here and talk and give our instant, instant reactions. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be want, here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fun. It's fun. Um don't know what we could say um, just, <laughs> just right off the bat, but I'll, I'll let you get to. I know the Noel Game Day chat and the group chat, we had a lot of things that were being said, but let's see if you could put them in the nicer things <laughs> while you're recording, Dustin. Well, first off, I just want to speak a little bit on the offense. Like, what, what the heck was going on today? It, it really just seemed like, Florida State couldn't decide on on who they want to put out there at quarterback. I mean, mm-hmm. if at one at towards the second half, it really just seemed like every other drive, Florida State had a different quarterback in the game. And honestly, that's not really a way to get your offense going. You always have a, have a different guy back in there. You can never get a rhythm. Like uh, Horny broke through that touchdown pass, and it was either the the next drive or the drive after that. He was already back out of the game. So I don't know. I just really didn't understand that process with so many flip flops at quarterback. And then also over to the defense, man, I mean, they, they looked extremely soft today out there against Clemson, especially the the defensive backs to me. I, I don't know if the scheme was obviously in coverage, but first down and 10, second down and five, Florida state always was 12 yards off Clemson's wide receivers. They would just throw short into the flat from there, break a few tackles and, and get a big gain. I mean, the defensive backs just had no chance. No, no. Clemson's always had an edge on most opponents in their wide receiver department, but it wasn't really even fair today. Um, not even close. And like the quarterback situation it is so flip-flopped, and that's what I was worried about, too. I think we talked about it um, earlier in the week was, you know, What's that plan really going to be like? Uh, and I wonder if that's kind of screwed up the offense. Uh, and, and then again, I mean, they are, they are playing the number two team in the country. Uh, we know what for, uh, the Clemson Tigers bring on the defensive line, but the the quarterback play was atrocious from both players. Um, both had terrible yeah. games. Um, I'm trying to look at some stats here. Uh, both threw for eight completions. Hornibrook was 8 of 12. James Blackman was 8 of 20. Um, I see Blackman James... has 9 of 23 on ESPN, just to let you know. Okay. Um, and then three interceptions total. Um, yeah. And I'm trying to refresh here. But the, your quarterback of the day, I, I guess you go with Hornibrook. But... I guess. <laughs> so, and and, and, and uh, then... <sighs> He he sees ghosts. Uh, I I don't know what he was seeing at times, but he he just did what we saw he did against NC State. He leaves the pocket for no reason whatsoever, um, and then we can go to Blackman where it, it, he just doesn't look like him himself right now. Uh, maybe the injury injury is causing it. I I don't know. He just doesn't look like himself since that Virginia game almost. He just doesn't. He looks rattled in his head. Um, and it, it's it's just strange from him. Yeah. And honestly, that's sort of similar to that question we took uh, on the podcast earlier this week. Someone asked if uh, we thought Blackman would, you know, look any different coming off a bye week and a, and a game he didn't play in. And today he, he did not look good. I mean, it was obviously his worst performance of the season, 9 out of 22, 66 yards, those two picks. And really, Blackman threw two picks on the same drive. He threw that pick. They got called back for whatever those penalties were. It was a couple strange penalties. Like, the, I don't even – I know we were messaging the 
game day chat, what is this ref saying right now? And then later in that same drive, Blackman throws a pick six. So, man. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> Your mic on uh, mute, bro. There you go. I was on mute there. Yep, yep. Remember, this is this is instant reaction, not full production here tonight. <laughs> um, you know, you know what's so interesting to me too, uh, the continuous talking trash <laughs> after. You know, you know, it's mainly on. I mean, it doesn't matter both sides of the ball. Mainly defense. Um, Clemson gets seven yard run for first down. Um, Florida State players are up. Uh, talking trash, getting down in their face. Um, and then even I saw tonight where uh, a, a wide receiver, a backup wide receiver with his helmet off, uh, while the Clemson offense is on the field, is talking trash to the quarterback who just scampered for a first down run right. while they're down. You know, while you're down, uh, I think that at that point it was four touchdowns. Um, it doesn't really make any sense to me. And that goes towards like the discipline and, and just what this team is made of. It, it's, it's very embarrassing. Um, it just kind of looks like street ball after a little while. Um, and this is kind of what it is under Willie Taggart. Um, I don't know. I, that's just something, even in high school, both me and you played ball, but you know, if I was doing any kind of that, that stupid mess, uh, I would be, handed uh, uh, some nice words and I wouldn't be playing uh, probably a whole quarter or something like that. I, I, I mean, it's happened to me before I've, I've talked trash and really did not need to, but was doing it and I got chewed out in front of everybody in front of my parents and in the stands and that's how it works. But it just Taggart just kind of just sits there. The, yeah. The to your point, I mean, to your point on uh, Florida state, just doing some dumbass things on Saturday Late in the game, Clemson, with their uh, backups in on offense, um, it was just a short a short run up the middle. And I noticed one of Clemson's offensive line who, I guess on the left side of the offensive line, he wasn't really in the play blocking. He was just watching the conclusion of the play. And, like, as he's standing there watching the end of the play, Stanford Samuels comes out from his blind side and pretty much tries to cheap shot the guy. And, I mean, I don't know. It just goes back to what we talked about a few weeks ago with uh, – Dontavious Jackson twisting that uh, ULM running back's neck while he was uh, making an attack on the fourth quarter. So just some Florida State defenders doing some some questionable moves, dirty plays, honestly, late in the game where you're already getting embarrassed. And, I mean, it just reflects really bad on, on the program for someone to take a shot like that at a player who's, you know, not even paying attention. Yeah, that's no, extremely, extremely embarrassing and, and uh, straight up immature. Absolutely. And, you know, some of that's changed so much. And those are veterans. Multiple former Knowles on here. National champions. We've had Derek Brooks on. Um, we've had a lot of former Knowles from different uh, generations. And, and they always talk about, you know, if, if someone's messing up, or like Amari Gaynor today, I just saw that coming. I knew he was going to just continue to throw him down. Um, and, uh, you know, they kind of just put their hands and they just shake their head and they put their hands to their face mask. And you're like, no, wh- why don't you pull him over? Tell him you're, you're hurting us. Stop doing that um, and get your mind right. In fact, like, you know, you're you're a little bit older, and let's mature up. Because you know, to, uh, who do we have on? We had on a former Noel. It, it might have been Jacoby McDaniel. Uh, I know we've had on Freddie Stevenson. We had another defensive player on in the past, and he's said, "Shoot, if that was happening, you know, that, that just didn't work with our team." It was a 2013 squad. Um, he, he was like, you know. Telvin Smith wouldn't have let that happen. You would have been chewed out. Uh, you just got players right now that just kind of just shake their head, and they, do, they just don't – there's no accountability. Uh, and that's a tough thing for this team right now that is not not good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Florida State, uh, we kind of talked about them moving forward after that loss to Virginia, taking the step up against Louisville, taking another step up against NC State. And, man, did they get pushed to the bottom of the freaking ladder today against Clemson. I mean, Clemson dominated Florida State. Clemson probably should have been up 
40, 38, 42 nothing in that first half. They went for it on a couple fourth downs. And obviously, Florida State's defense uh, stood up a little bit there. But, I mean, this was a game that we, we hoped that Florida State would show some signs of life in, show that they can fight against elite competition. And it, it was just like last year in Tallahassee, maybe even worse. I mean, it, it was yeah. absolutely terrible. 45 is, Yeah. The only time they got points is whenever uh, Clemson had in their second and a little bit of their third right. string. Or, and that's a fun – that's like the – it's not funny, but it's terrible to think of. I mean, they had their second – string in a majority of them to start the second half and then it continued where they even had what their third string quarterback in what taste on Pramaka yeah <laughs> um, yeah exactly you know you know we we'll kind of like what just base or go off some highlights of the game uh Caleb Bourne gets his first career touchdown Hit a very nice run, uh, a long scamper for a touchdown there. He finally gets one. Cam Akers only had nine carries for 34 yards. Um, you lose Helton in a game, uh, and I don't know the extent, but it just didn't look good. Um, didn't look good. He left the game with an air cast on his left leg, and <clears throat> yeah. he was down for a long time, had to get carted off. So that's yeah. never something you want to see, especially – you know, that kid has as much heart as anyone on this Florida State roster, and he adds a lot to the to the mindset of this team, I feel like, especially toughness. Yeah, I agree. And then Fagan was also in a boot on the sideline. Uh, didn't look too great either. Um, so those two losses aren't great. Janaris Robinson comes back into the second half uh, and, and, and makes plays, but, I mean, it's just too late, I mean, and the game was over heading into the second quarter and yeah. can't do can't do too much after that um let's let's go through some of these we were on uh willie taggart actually just mentioned about Keyshawn helen and said that he hurt his knee and is likely done for the season so florida state's gonna lose a wide receiver there starting wide receiver disgusting dude yeah terrible and he's a big uh big Kind of just a good teammate and a leader for that offense too, uh, and the team as a whole. A lot of the guys like him. You could tell immediately. Almost the whole sideline came out to sit down and take a knee around him. Um, so that there's a, that's a tough loss for Florida State. That makes me pretty upset. Yeah, uh, that's a tough loss for Florida State. Uh, let me go through some of these. Let's see, we got 16 questions and some statements in here uh michael maxi 1425 says fsu can still get six wins even if, even if they lose to wake miami and uf the players never quit on taggart this game was going to be a blowout um i think florida state still gets bowl eligible dustin I mean, obviously, Florida State's sending three and three right now, halfway through their schedule. There's still there's still a chance. I'd I'd say a decent chance, if not a good chance, for Florida State to end up making a bowl this year. But you have to wonder about the team's mindset coming off a beating like this in Death Valley, and then obviously they're on a back to back road next week at Wake Forest, which the Demon Deacons this year it's one of the best Wake Forest teams in recent memory. And honestly, I really think that game could uh, get ugly. Not as bad as this game against Clemson, but maybe Wake Forest winning by double digits next Saturday. So it's all going to come down to how this team responds and how their mentality is going forward. Let's see. I'm going to go on to the next one. Who? Oh, this is a good question from Kenny Strack. I mean, after what we saw today, who is quarterback number one? If Blackman starts next week, I am calling for Taggart's job. And I have been supporting him through all of this crap. That comes from Kenny Strack. What is? What do you think about that? Because right now it is it is all over the place. I, I don't know. You know, what Bryles said it before the game during a practice this last week, uh, saying that he doesn't even know if they have a quarterback plan. And shoot, did it not show? It sure did show 
uh, on uh, today against Clemson. But yeah, I, quarterback number one, who do you go with, Dustin? I mean, honestly, I don't really think one player is that much better than than the other player. But Florida State has has to make a decision because, I mean, like you just mentioned with what Bryle said and kind of like what I talked about a couple minutes ago. I mean, this team had no answer for who their quarterback would be today. I mean, just switching switching each switching quarterbacks, so many drives. I'm sure they both played, you know, at least five or six drives each during that game. I mean, and it just it just doesn't let your offense get into rhythm. You have a different signal caller back there. James Blackman is a right hander. Alex Hornibrook's a left hander. It just kind of changes the scope of the field every time you make that switch. And yeah, honestly, for the skill players, it's got to get a little bit confusing as well. So really, yeah. I don't care who the quarterback is. I don't care if it's Hornibrook. I don't care if it's Blackman. But Florida State has to settle on someone to be back there. And they cannot keep going to this two quarterback system. It's just not going to work. Mm-hmm. I agree. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think we were previewing NC State. You know, you know, switching that field around uh, with Hornybrook being left-handed, it does a little bit more than you think. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm really 50-50 on who Florida State starts, but I think they do need to stick with one quarterback because it just looks too jostled around and uh, doesn't seem like. Both quarterbacks are comfortable being out there. Um, I think. You but if it does, keep... if it does tell you anything, me, you, and, and Fisher were all pretty decidedly in in Blackman's corner heading into this game. So now for us to be fifty fifty, you know that kind of tells a little bit of how we're feeling after this game. Blackman did not do a lot to impress today. Hornybrook didn't either. But yeah, I don't know. Total train wreck. Yep. Um. <laughs> It's a nice way to say it. Uh, let's get a question here. We've got a lot of questions here. We'll just run through them real quick from CIO Torchwood Institute. <laughs> he says, do fans understand how far off the O-line really is? Where does FSU go at QB in 2020? <laughs> do you think FSU was repping more wake than Clemson? Over under 3.5 wins in the remainder of the schedule. So there's a lot there. Um, we'll just do yes or no's and quick answers. So, do fans understand how far off the O-line really is? I would probably say I think they really do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think everyone understands that uh, the offensive line isn't it anything. Is. To, when, when your best player on the offensive line is a true freshman, yeah, there's some worries there's there. Your answer. Yeah, there's your answer there. Um, where does FSU go at quarterback in 2020? This is an interesting one now because – Jeff Sims is, is your guy, uh, is your freshman coming in, who, who's a four-star rated from 247 sports. Um, at, at this rate, it, it's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question. <laughs> you go with a true, true, true freshman with Jeff Sims. It seems like Tiger and him are very close. You know, I'm going to go with a, I'm going to go with a wild I'm going to go with a wild prediction, maybe out there a little bit. I'm going to say if Kendall Bryles stays in Tallahassee for the 2020 season, Florida State will start De'Eric King at quarterback next season. Grad transfer. I like that. I like that. Um, let's go to the next one here. Let's see. Hornybrook needs to be the quarterback. I'm surprised to say that after watching him as a Badger, but he is a better choice. Better. He has a better chance of winning games. Stick to one. Um we kind of already gave the thoughts on the quarterbacks there. Yeah. Um, if anything, the only reason Hornybrook maybe has a better chance of winning some games is just because he doesn't take the same risk that James Blackman does down the field. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there was, there was a ball there. And there was multiple plays where the quarterbacks had chances and it didn't come through. I remember a play with Blackman going deep to uh terry and if he yeah. had thrown you know and we're, and we're we know what blackman usually brings with his deep balls he, he was coming into the season and everything he's a very talented guy at throwing it deep and just too short on multiple occasions but i remember the one with terry down the side if that I also ball missed was that uh sorry no you're good I also missed that wheel route to cam Akers down mm-hmm. the sideline out of the back yeah, I, was, I was about to say that was 
And, and then again, I mean, he is rolling out. He's got probably 50 guys on him from Clemson. But then again, I, I think he could have made that, and I think he was pretty pissed off after that. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Man, they just keep on coming in. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Um, Tell the fan base see. is a little amped up. Yeah, just a tiny bit. I need to do these more often. Uh, let's see. Gabe says, uh, regardless of the score, it's clear that Taggart has 100% changed the locker room attitude. The guys played hard through the final whistle. As bad as it was, that was only the second time in the last 15 years that FSU didn't cover as an underdog. Only question, is JB still QB next week? So we kind of went over that. But do you feel like the locker room and the culture has, has been changed under Taggart? Did you see full energy and full um, play from these guys, in your opinion? I'd say it's a step forward from last year. I mean, it's not totally where you want to be, obviously. But, you know, last year... Tiger kind of challenged his team following the loss of Clemson said it was the first time he had really seen some of the players quit on, on the team and quit during the game. And honestly, I, I didn't really see anyone quit today on Florida state sideline. I mean, they played hard. It was just, they, they played against a team that that was better than them. I mean, plain and simple and Clemson out executed Florida state today. And they, they played like a national championship team should play. And that, you know, that's where Clemson is probably going to be headed towards the end of the season. And obviously Florida State's more like a seven and five, six and six team. So I don't think we saw any of the Seminoles quit, especially the defense holding late on a goal line stand, forcing a turnover. Obviously the offense finally getting in the end zone there at the end of the third quarter and then also scoring again in the fourth. So they didn't quit. And the mentality is definitely improving. Uh, another question here, and I'll get over this too. This is just an instant reaction, and, and it won't be really edited as much. So um, try to get this out to you as quickly as possible. But uh, we got one here talking about the locker room from Gabe. He asked, regardless of the score, it's clear that Taggart has 100% changed the locker room attitude. The guys played hard through the final whistle. As bad as it was, that was only the second time in the last 15 years that FSU didn't cover as an underdog. Only question is... Uh, James Blackman is still quarterback number one next week. So we kind of already talked about the quarterbacks. Me and Dustin did. But uh, as the culture changed, has Taggart done it? I mean, I think what he's meaning here, of course, you know, giving up on the game. I do think the players are still uh, trying to compete uh, no matter what the score is. I think that's changed. I think it's, you know, Clemson kind of came into this game pretty pissed off, and that's what I was worried about for Florida State's chances here at, at having a good game. Uh, Clemson was pretty pissed off. Uh, Dabo was too. They wanted to put points up on the scoreboard uh, to show nationally that they can still be in that conversation to be in the playoff picture. Um, and idiots that were, in my opinion, talking about it the last two weeks are silly enough. Or silly, silly willies. Um, Clemson's talented. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, I was worried, and I think we talked about it in the last podcast too, but I was worried that Trevor Lawrence would have uh, his best game of the season, uh, and he did a pretty well job for just the first half of the game, pretty much. So um, I do think the locker room has changed. I do think there's still some things that need to be fixed, like we talked about earlier, uh, just kind of talking to trash to opposing teams whenever you're down four touchdowns even five touchdowns is kind of silliness and immature and i think things have to be changed in that area but i think not only is it the coaches jobs but i think leaders uh, need to start holding guys accountable uh, and that's usually where you see a success for teams uh the last question here and you know looking ahead at wake forest um i don't know if if I'm able to get D Dustin back on here now, hopefully the, the mic will work. We're having some technical difficulties, um, but there's... Whoa, I'm back. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. Um, Just real quick, and then we'll end this instant reaction and get this out to you guys really quickly. Uh, Wake Forest, why do you think uh, they're so good this year? My opinion is it does help, though, that they really haven't played anybody, but... What's your reaction? We got a question, uh, a couple questions here about Wake Forest, but why do you think Wake Forest is, is so good this year? I mean, yeah, Wake Forest certainly has had a, a softer schedule to start 2019. They did 
go on the road and beat a, I guess, mediocre Boston College team, 27 to 24, two weeks ago, taking on Louisville tonight. Right now, they're actually trailing seven nothing early in that game. But honestly, the main thing that the Demon Deacons have done very well this season is, for one, they have a solid defense that's been able to, you know, use the bend but not break mantra. They've given up some points, but not enough points to where their offense hasn't been able to overcome. And, you know, Jamie Newman has taken the reins this year for Wake Forest. He's thrown 14 touchdowns and three interceptions. Really been great at not turning the ball over. And also the the running game. I mean, we've kind of talked about that, that mesh point that Wake Forest likes to use in that uh, read option. To this point, the running game's averaging over 4.3 yards a carry and it's netted eight touchdowns on the ground. So, Really, this is a balanced offense, and it's going to be a tough game for this Florida State defense. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that, that will pretty much do it for this instant reaction. Uh, we always try to get these out uh, as soon as possible. It'll be our first time all season. We've done one of these, but we're going to try to continue to do them as much as we can if we're available and able to. Uh, you can find this podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Spotify, and now YouTube. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribed over there. And if you're on iTunes, and you su- make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any new uh, podcasts we upload. And if you rate us five stars and leave a review, that helps a lot with getting the growth out to other knolls that might want to give it a listen. You can follow us on Twitter at Hear the Spear. Uh, but uh, yep, Florida State falls to Clemson. 45 to 14 in Death Valley. Uh, and next week they will face a ranked Wake Forest team uh, at Wake Forest. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we will talk to you guys next week.